Hey everybody, Andre from CFX Films here, and this is a video that if you've been following me for a while now, you should be excited for, because yes, this is another Unity tutorial. And this is not just Unity, this is Unity 5. I have not released a Unity 5 tutorial before because I have been trying to find a tutorial to release that you guys haven't really seen yet, because there's a lot of YouTubers that are now covering Unity, because it's very popular, and um, it was difficult to find something unique. And I'm working on an upcoming game. It's not announced yet, so, so I won't be uh, releasing any details about it. But there is a technique that I'm using in it, which involves After Effects, and I want to teach it to you guys so you can use it in your own game, because I think it's really cool. Now, I haven't perfected it yet, and this is just the prototype that I created, but I will show you guys eventually how to do it using some more complex footage. Now I'll show you what I mean by playing my scene really quick. This is the editor. This is a, a little test scene. I did not make these assets. This is the um, the sci-fi package. I forgot exactly what it's called. You can find this on the asset store. I'll have the link in the description. I'm going to play this really quick. Now you see this, this blue bar, uh, sorry, blue box right here. This is where you need to be looking. Keep your eyes here. So it's going to go full screen and you'll see what I'm talking about. I shot a, a test video in front of a green screen, and this is what it looks like. All right, so there's a beacon hidden somewhere on the ship. Find it and bring that back to us. Now, I don't really have any other helpful information to actually guide you, so you're on your own. Good luck. All right, so as you can see, it was basically simulating a hologram or a video pop-up. I'll stop this for a second. There you go. And, uh, and basically, you probably get the idea now of what this is trying to do. It's the idea that you can play a video, and this is actually, by the way, this is a raw image, so this is running on the Unity, the new UI campus. Sorry, campus, canvas. So I have the canvas here, and, uh, you know, it's resizing itself here, so that's what it looks like, a weird widescreen shape. But I have it on the canvas, and I can move it, and, and you can do whatever you want. You can do this with buttons. See, I could, I could have several different pieces of UI on the screen at once, but it's just a pop-up. So you see it's a raw image, no texture, added the audio source, which is the video that I rendered out of After Effects. And then down here is just the play video script. And the animation is just so it pops up and, and goes away. That's just... You know, that's just the animator. Now, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to write the script so you can do this for your own footage, but I'm going to go into After Effects, which I have loaded up here, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, this is what the video looks like uh, before I rendered it. As you can see, it's a black background. And if you know anything about uh, Unity shaders or, or materials, you know that the particle additive uh, shader is usually used to remove the black backgrounds. Unity doesn't really have an alpha texture shader where you can just get rid of the alphas and still have it smooth edged and you know look decent, uh, which is unfortunate, but you, know, you can always get your own shaders. But if you're doing this just with the basic engine, uh, this is usually the best way to do it. Now this is a hologram, that's why it is transparent. Now, if you were to have, let's say a live action footage of somebody standing in front of a green screen, full body, and walking around or walking past, uh, you can you could do that, and then you could just get rid of the green screen, and then import it into Unity, place it place it on a quad, and then play that animation so it looks like some really high resolution figure, although it's just a two D video. Um, this hasn't been done a lot in Unity, but it is it is really cool when it's done correctly. This is the raw video that I imported. I just shot this in front of my webcam really quick. Uh, my brother actually is holding up the green screen back there. You can see his finger in the corner. Uh, my oldest brother. And uh, it's kind of cool. That's all it really was. It was just me starting my webcam and closing the webcam. That's all it was. And uh, I just brought it in. Opened up the... Uh, let me see if I can... Yeah, there's the effects panel. I just added the effects that I needed to color it. I used key light to remove the green screen, added this little cropping, this feathered mask, so I could uh, cut out the rest and cut out my brother's fingers. And then I just used colorist to color it. You know, this is, this is pretty standard. Um, 
if I need to do a, another tutorial in the future covering exactly how to, how to achieve certain effects in After Effects, I will, but that's not the point of this video. Uh, that I, you know, down here, I, I just set the uh, parameters of the length of the video, rendered it out into, um, I believe, let's see what format. I think it was an MP4 format. I rendered it out as an, yeah, it was an AVI, and then I imported it into Premiere and then converted it just because Unity didn't accept that format for whatever reason. Uh, but then I brought it in and I played it, and this is, this is, you know, how it turned out. So I'm going to play it again here. And you can see how it is transparent. So if you look where my head is, you can see the objects that are behind it. You know, I didn't crop the green screen perfectly and it wasn't really lit properly. But then again, I'm just sitting in front of my desk and uh, I just had a green screen behind me and I shot this really quick. It literally took me 10 minutes to do, which is also why I'm so excited about this, that you guys can use this in your own games. And um, I love this UFPS controller. All right, I'll stop it again. Now I'm going to load up the script and show you guys how I did it. Now this is a very simple script. It's basically, it, a lot of this is just based off, see, I don't even need the uh, the update here. This was just the standard, the default C-sharp script that I created. I didn't even get rid of update, but you don't need it. So, you know, just as the standard get component. And this isn't, I'm assuming that you have some basic knowledge of Unity already, uh, and the programming language uh, is C-sharp or JavaScript. If you don't, um, please refer to my other videos in the past, or there's several other YouTubers who have covered this stuff already too, so um, you should be covered. But I'm going to be sort of brushing through this, but still trying to give you as much detail as I can. Now, the first thing that I added in here was, well, Unity Engine.UI. This is what you need when you're using C-sharp. Um, this is what you input in JavaScript. It's, it's something else I can't remember, but it's something very similar to this. You have to have UI. This allows Unity to interact with the, the new UI system with the canvas. Okay, that's very important. The next line down, require component. Simple, when you're starting up, the, the, when it's reading the script, this means that uh, the script cannot run unless you have whatever component is required. And in this case, it's the audio source. And this usually just is, is a safety procedure so you can avoid getting some serious errors if you happen to leave this out. Now, public class, I renamed it to play video. And the two variables, one is the moving texture, and then one is the audio source. Movie texture is just where you drop the actual video on because when you import it, into uh, Unity, it automatically converts it and gives you the uh, the audio track too. Uh, let me zoom this out a little bit. It converts it so it gives you these two files. So it does a nice job and organizes that for you. And um, yeah, the audio just play is just where you place the audio on that video. So that again, this little audio track. And um, void start, yeah. So when you start up. First thing it's doing is, I'm going to split this up, get component. So it's grabbing the, uh, the raw image. Now it's looking for, you know, it's looking for the, um, this actual texture. See if I disable it, you can't actually see it. This is the actual renderer. So this is what is allowing you to actually play the video in this defined region. So this square this is, you know, I can adjust the shape and everything. That is the raw image that I'm adjusting. I'm just having a moving texture on it. So think about it as just, yeah, an, an animated moving texture. So it's getting the texture on it, and that it's equaling that to movie, which is the movie texture as movie texture. So then it's it's making that uh, the raw image equal automatically. So we're setting here so we don't have to do it ourselves. It's making it equal that movie texture that Unity converted that you imported. Now we're making the audio. It's equaling the audio source that it's getting, and it's just getting this simple audio source here that we added on as a component. If you don't remember how to add a component, you click Add Component, search it if you don't want to search through the list, and it gives you all the options here. Super fast, super easy, and intuitive. Then audio.clip equals movie.audioclip. So that is... So it's automatically 
again, the same way this is setting its movie texture directly to this to this audio to to the movie texture imported, the audio clip is equaling itself to the audio clip of the movie texture. So it's sort of syncing them. And then last two bits, very simple, very straightforward. Movie.play, audio.play. That is once t telling Unity to start the clip automatically. If you did not want to start the video automatically, you could simply add in a, uh, I believe, wait four seconds actually works in uh, C sharp. Let's see, does it work? Unexpected symbol. No, I wonder. I wonder what it is in C sharp. But you you get it if you if you use JavaScript. This is basic. This is JavaScript right here. But C sharp has a very very similar substitute. But yeah, this just plays them. And if you didn't want to play them automatically, you can have a, a a trigger. You could have these. You know, you have start here, but you can make it in update. You can make it variable based on trigger on collider, enter exit anything you want that can trigger these. So you can have cutscenes of. You know, if you're having a military game, a soldier can be speaking, your commander will, will start talking and then his video will pop up in the corner. If you've played Halo 3, you know that sometimes Cortana would have her image sort of pop up in the Master Chief's HUD. Uh, that's This is sort of a way that you can simulate, simulate that too, since uh, if you have a, back, a, black, <laughs> a black background, you set the material. See, I created a material for the video here. I just created it to the uh, particle shader, so it automatically makes it transparent. Once you finish the script, make sure you save it, Control S. I'm gonna minimize it again. Uh, in order to actually get this to play, you have to select the, uh, the raw image that's in the canvas, and you're not gonna have any of these actually here, but you need to um, add the script, so make sure you click and drag to add the script. Animators, the same thing. Window, you open up uh, the animator here, and I already have this animation by default. But if you want to just add an animation, open up the animation window, and then uh, the record button, see if I have it selected. You click record, and you start adding your keyframes uh, the way that you normally would with any other object. And then you drag the movie object onto the movie variable, and the audio is, because it's a private variable, you can't see it unless we go to debug mode. See, then you can see it here, but it's disabled. Uh, it's setting the audio itself. You don't have to. You could make it a public variable, but since it does it for you, you know, just save the, save the time, make it do it itself. Make it do it itself. What did I just say there? Make it do it itself. You know what I mean. And that's really all you need because then it just plays the video and you can control it however, however you want. Again, you know, make it pop-ups, cut scenes. If you want to have some really cool sci-fi window, you could add it, um, make it full screen. So you can, up here in the, uh, the anchor presets, you can make it so it scales the whole screen, which is actually kind of funny. I'll show you what, what happens. And uh, I'll disable, I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to scale with it. I'm going to disable the animator, so you're just going to see what it looks like when you just see my face blowing up. There you go. Hi, Andre. Yeah, so you can you can adjust it. This is sort of how, you know, same with the Cortana thing. And if this was a, a sci-fi pop-up, you could have, you know, warning, you know, uh, asteroid. and <laughs> just sits there. See, I didn't get rid of it. You could have incoming and then have... A bunch of warning screens pop up, maybe a video pop up. You could have some some really creative uh, uses for this. So, you know, I'm just trying to help you get your get your brains turning, get get creative. Now, start thinking about some cool ideas that you can do with this. And uh, if you actually use this technique, please let me know. I'd love to see what you come up with. So, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. This is sort of my comeback with Unity tutorials. I know this is a small one, but again, I'm working on my new game, and once I'm done with that game, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out about it because it's a pretty big game, and I'm doing some pretty big things with it. So I haven't forgot about you guys. I haven't forgot about game development. I'm still doing it. I'm just taking my time because, you know, I'm working on a lot of things at once. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. Please leave a like if you did. Dislike it if you didn't. But my rule is if you dislike it, you have to tell me why. So, and don't, and don't be a troll. Although if you're a troll, you are entertaining. I have some fun with you guys and, um, yeah, you make me laugh. So keep doing what you're doing. 
be yourselves, guys. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you later. See ya. <laughs>